Good morning. My word shall accomplish that which I purpose and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. Good morning and welcome everyone. I wanna encourage you all again to locate the chat button on your Zoom screen. Uh, let us know if you have any announcements or comments that you would like to make in the chat. Uh, let us know if you would like any special prayers in the chat, we would love to pray with you. Get in touch via the website also if that's easier. Uh, the words to the service are available on the website and also in the chat room below. And I invite everyone once again to uh, join us for coffee after the service, virtual coffee. And it's now my pleasure to welcome you all uh, with a gathering hymn by the wonderful Heather Jean Jordan. you, Heather. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor, power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. Amen. If we claim to be sinless, we deceive ourselves and we are strangers to the truth. If we confess our sins, God is just and may be trusted to forgive our sins and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Spirit of God, search our hearts. In a moment of silence and then together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty and most merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved others as our Savior Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us rejoice in the rock of our salvation. We sing to you, O God, and bless your name and tell of your salvation from day to day. We pro proclaim your glory to the nations, your praise to the ends of the earth. Alleluia, the Lord is risen, he is risen indeed. O oh, come, let us worship. Our psalm today is Psalm 139, verses 1 to 12. Lord, you have searched me out and known me, and you know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. And now together we pray. God of mystery and power, even our minds and hearts are the veils and signs of your presence. We come in silent wonder to learn the way of simplicity, the eternal road that leads to love for you and for your whole creation. We come as your son Jesus Christ taught us and in his name. Amen. And now we have the proclamation of the word, the first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through 19. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid, and he said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Lutz. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading. 
A reading from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it, it is not to the flesh to live according to it, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received is brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we await eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. And the servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good morning again. Um, I wanted to share with you today a little testimony uh, that I have prepared. And as I was thinking about the right topic for today's devotional, and I settled on the word patience. We've all heard that phrase, patience is a virtue. 
And we've also heard the follow-up plea to God, Lord, give me patience, but give it to me right now. So I looked at scripture on the topic of patience, and there's a lot, which perhaps is not surprising given the terrible trials and tribulations of so many oppressed people living in those biblical times. Imagine the patience they required to await the Lord, suffer under slavery, and build decent lives for their families. But I settled on sharing today the verse from Romans 12, verse 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. I feel we are fulfilling that verse in the work we continue to do at St. George's and St. Michael's during these very challenging times. Let's make sure that we acknowledge that the affliction for so many, too many, has been severe, even unto death, as they battle this terrible virus. But we are human, and we're longing for and patiently awaiting the return to what we each consider to be our past normal. Beyond the patience required to endure the restrictions of this pandemic, we observed the actions of the past month by the racialized communities all over the world who have clearly exhausted their patience as they wait for true equality, safety, and justice in their struggles. So I urge us all today to find patience with our families with whom we are safely sequestered at home, patience with our leaders who are struggling to support their citizens in unimaginably difficult times, with our colleagues who continue to ask for the Zoom dial-in details that we have provided already multiple times, or who are asking us to accept the children, pets, spouses, and other interruptions to what would normally be a regular professional meeting. Let us learn more patience than we had before this pandemic. And let us be patient as we wait to return to our past lives. This health and lives are at stake if we forsake the necessary restrictions too quickly. Let's take this time to be calm, sometimes quiet. Take a nap for heaven's sake appreciate what we once had and will have again. Be kind and be giving. Yes, God, please help me and all of us to embrace all these definitions of patience. And I know, sorry, we can't help it. Please give it to us right now. But more importantly, give it to us always. Amen. And now we confess our faith and reaffirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I just want to remind everyone again, uh, please share your prayer requests in the chat, and then we will be able to pray with you on the live stream. But now we move to our operatory hymn, From the Rising of the Sun. Let the name of the 
you, Heather. We move now to our intercessions and thanksgivings. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter, we pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, we pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter, we pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease through all the world, we pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying to comfort and strengthen them. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. We pray especially today for Ron Lewis, for Martin Tweedsdale, Mandy and Hannah Kujawa, Robin and Kathy Real. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your son. Grant that as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Collect for the seventh Sunday of Pentecost. Almighty God, your son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you have any announcements to add, I'm just going to look at the chat. Um, reminder, Tithely is your opportunity to thank everyone, and we thank everyone for your continued giving uh, during COVID-19. Um, the online parish websites will link you to giving, or you can give in traditional ways like mail, mail check, um, however you are comfortable giving, it's so important that we support our churches at this time. Um, we do have readers lined up for the balance of the summer, but if you'd like to be added to the list of rotational readers, uh, please contact Jane Russell. And now our closing hymn, Wind Upon the Waters. And again, I encourage those of you who can click on the coffee hour, online coffee hour to join us uh, for some community and fellowship after the service.
Thank you, Heather. Well, we welcome Seth back, well rested, I hope, I'm sure, from his uh, holiday, and he'll be leading the service for us again next week. Um, we have a, a slightly shorter service today because uh, I can't compete with the robust um, sermons given by Howard and uh, Seth with the short, uh, thoughtful devotional I prepared. Um, but we're all looking forward still to hopefully getting together virtually for a little coffee hour um, right after the service and um, welcoming Seth and Britt and Eve back next week to lead our services. With that, we'll close the service. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>